Hi there, this is Robin Norgren, and I'm your host for Creativity, Montessori, and the Meaning of Life. Let's begin with Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 5, written in the New Living Translation, with some thoughts from Eugene Peterson. When Jesus saw his ministry drawing huge crowds, he climbed a hillside. Those who were apprenticed to him, the committed, climbed with him. Arriving at a quiet place, he sat down and taught his climbing companions. This is what he said. You're blessed when you're at the top of when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God and his rule. You're blessed when you feel you've lost what is most dear to you. Only then can you be embraced by the one most dear to you. You're blessed when you're content with just who you are. No more, no less. That's the moment you find yourselves proud owners of everything that can't be bought. Most of our culture assumes that good things like wealth, health, and happiness come to good people. The world often defines blessing as success or simply a lack of turmoil. But Jesus has something more in mind. If blessings are a gift, what is required to receive the sort of blessing that Jesus describes? Note that these blessings apply no matter where you are in your life. Praise God for his character as a good giver and gracious grower who only takes away so that he can increase what is most valuable. Confess to God any frustrations or fears you have, especially if you're at the end of your rope or experiencing loss. Ask him to make known to you the blessings he is working through, even those circumstances. Blessings come even in the form of losses, frustrations, and fears. Live today looking for God's mercies and goodness instead of focusing on what you think is missing. This is from a book called White Hot Truth by Daniel Laporte. People will think they are good. They are simply suffering. Because the more good you think you are, the more nobody is okay for you. If you're too good, no life can happen. It's not your goodness that will liberate you. It's the joyfulness of your own nature. Sadhguru. Underneath so much of our self-helping can be a lot of self-loathing. We create new obsessions to replace our old addictions. Of course, a green smoothie is an immensely more nutritious choice than a soda pop. Exercise and meditation have far more enjoyable side effects than antidepressants. Practicing loving kindness is perpetually awesome, but often, certainly more than we admit to ourselves, we're stuck in a self-help groundhog day. I'm not good enough yet, but I'll get better. I'm getting better at bettering myself. Am I better yet? And repeat. We're doing so many good and balanced things to grow and develop ourselves, but maybe we're trying to get better for some healthy reason, unhealthy reasons. What's behind the compulsive drive to improve? Criticism. Trust me, I know. I'm a highly self-critical, self-improvement author. It's the criticism that you absorb from how you were raised, as unintentional the harm of your family's commentary may have been. It's the trauma carried over from that lifetime when you were burned at the stake for being inquisitive. It's the old patriarchy patriarchy still playing on your self-esteem. It seeps in from every photoshopped image telling you you should be thinner, curvier, but only in the right places, 
whiter, browner, perfectly coiffed, and perpetually positive as you balance your work time, your workout time, your thriving career, and feed your well-behaved children non-genetically modified food. And if you're not making time for all these things, well, you must not want it bad enough. Maybe you need, what you need is another workshop on finding your passion. Lots of believe criticism makes for lots of effort to improve. Endless effort, relentless effort, ruthless effort. What happens when all of the life balance hacks don't yield our desired results? You know that life balance is a total myth, right? It's the biggest self-help sham ever. Or when we do get what we set out to achieve, but we feel kind of empty when we get it, well, then we just criticize ourselves even more harshly. Spiritual passion can be punishing when it comes from the hollowness of our psyche rather than the fullness of our spirit. Between striving and fullness, there's a valley, and it's full of delicious questions. The more questions we ask, the more nourishment we bring to our lives and each other. Buddhists call the cycle of wandering through life and death samsara. The operative word here is wandering, as in, we're ambling from lifetime to lifetime, sweating the small stuff and not really seeing the bigger picture. The name of the evolution game is to wake up, get off the wheel of suffering, samsara, and onto the ground of full presence which in turn creates inner peace. According to the Buddhist teachings, we exit the crazy ride when we stop craving for things to be different than they are. When we drop the illusions of separation and imperfection, we can enjoy the valley we find ourselves in. Can you imagine not craving to be different than you are right now? Take a breath. For just a moment, can you stop craving to be anything different than you are right now? Because here's the sacred paradox. Transformation begins with the radical acceptance of what is. So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. From Steal Like an Artist by Austin Kleon. School yourself. School is one thing, education is another. The two don't always overlap. Whether you're in school or not, it's always your job to get yourself in education. You have to be curious about the world in which you live. Look things up. Chase down every reference. Go deeper than anybody else. That's how you'll get ahead. Google everything. I mean everything. Google your dreams. Google your problems. Don't ask a question before you Google it. You'll either find the answer or you'll come up with a better answer. Always be reading. Go to the library. There's magic to being surrounded by books. Get lost in the stacks. Read bibliographies. It's not the book you start with. It's the book that book leads you to. Collect books, even if you don't plan on reading them right away. Filmmaker John Waters has said, nothing is more important than an unread library. Don't worry about doing research. Just search. Search. 